What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome to my Ninja Corrin in-depth analysis. I'll be going over the best builds that you can run on her and I'll also showcase some gameplay so that you can see her in action. I'll also go over the teammates and the counters that you should be running because pretty much everyone is going to be using her as she is the free reward out of the Hero Rises event. Ninja Corrin is an extremely good green mage cavalier thanks to her preferred weapon Ninjutsu Scrolls. So this 9 might brave weapon provides her with plus 4 speed and inflicts minus 4 defense and resistance as a penalty and this does have the brave hits so she can attack twice and then if she's got more speed than the opponent she can deal the true damage based on the difference between the speed stat of the two units and this can cap at plus 7. So she can get like 14 true damage on the brave hits and if she quad attacks then she can get 28 true damage at max. So this makes her into an extremely good offensive unit because not only you have the brave hits here but you also have the true damage. So almost always she's going to be hitting the opponent for some damage even if she has the bad matchup. And she also has superb offensive stat spread of 41 base attack and 40 base speed. Both of these do have the super boons. I do recommend attack IV over the speed IV. The reason being is that it's a lot more preferred to kill the opponent in just two hits of your brave weapon instead of trying to quad attack them because they might have follow-up negation weapons or they might just kill you on the counter attack. So that's why finishing off the opponents in your brave hits is always going to be preferred. Her bulk is not really too high and her HP is low and that low HP can actually be an advantage because she can fall into the Wings of Mercy range of her allies much faster if she uses the recall skills. So that really helps you with uh, a lot of offensive strategies and Ninja Corrin does have attack speed push for as an offensive skill. It does damage her so the recall damage can be annoying but still it's a really good option that she has by default. She also has speed resistance far trace which inflicts minus 3 speed and resistance debuff on the opponent during the combat and provides you with Kanto. So this Kanto is not really fixed movement like of Regan or Brave Erika or Itri. Instead this Kanto depends on the remaining movement that you have on your unit. And uh, this can actually help you in many situations because you can move Corrin to her max range and then when you pop her duo skill, you can basically use the trace skill to retreat or even go further into the enemy lines. So this can definitely have its own purpose by saving it up compared to Kanto. Far trace skills only trigger if you actually have some extra movement remaining. So that is the main difference and uh, she also has joint drive attack which really helps with her playstyle because she does have a brave weapon. So any kind of extra attack is always going to be nice. And now let's talk about her duo skill which makes her even more powerful. So this duo skill can basically refresh herself. So it could be considered like a gale force because it can only be used after you've entered a combat. So you can refresh herself with this and move again. So it pretty much provides you with two actions on your ninja Corrin and that's extremely good. Now in Aetherade's offense there are going to be the dual hindrance structures so it's not going to be the easiest to use but still because of the fact that Ninja Corrin is such an offensive unit she can usually go in and kill the duo units and eventually trigger her duo skill. This duo skill can always be used in other game modes and also in summoner duels. In summoner duels if you're not really running a dancer on your team then Ninja Corrin can certainly be useful with this duo skill and can still threaten your opponents um, even if she has used her own action. And this duo skill can only be used once per map so you definitely have to use this strategically and in the best moment possible. So that is the main utility of her duo skill and then she also has a dual effect built into this duo skill. So she can score as a 195 BST unit in arena and Colosseum game modes and that makes her one of the best scoring arena units in the entire game because she could be used in any season and she scores so high the only other arena units which can score higher than her are gonna be newer dagger and duo chrome so ninja corin is a superb arena investment because of her scoring and the fact that she's just so powerful she's gonna be making your arena experience a lot better ninja corin is honestly a really good free unit that we have got uh, she's quite versatile can be used from in-game content to the competitive game modes and even at unmerge she packs some serious power. If you have been playing Faye for long enough you might remember Reinhardt um, but Ninja Corrin is basically a green Reinhardt but stronger, also faster and also has a dual skill. So yeah all of that just makes her into a really really fantastic unit. 
Ninja Corrin's green color also helps her tremendously in her matchups because we have a lot of popular blue far safe tanks like Ascended Udun and Brave Hector, and against Ascended Fiorm she has neutral matchup. There are not too many common red far safe tanks, so Ninja Corrin has a pretty good time against most of the far safe tanks and is going to be having decent matchup against them, so that makes her a really good unit even against the top tanks in the metagame. For the most part, her base kit is going to be doing fine. And this could be run in some of their duels, in Aether Raid's offense, and for the in-game content. So for her budget build, you just have to run Blade Session Sacred Seal, or something that can give her extra attack and speed. For the most part, she's going to be functioning in her player phase, so that's why Blade Session is pretty much her best option. And for her special, you can just run Moonbow or Glimmer. Moonbow does help you in the tough matchups where the opponents do have more resistance, so I do prefer it a bit, but Glimmer can also be run. Now if you do hate having the recall damage, then Susparrow 3 is also a slotty option that you can run from the Divine Code section. So this can definitely help you in the in-game content where you do not want her to be outside of the attack speed push range. And uh, she can easily be used to beat up most of the in-game content from the Abyssal maps, chain challenges, to the story maps, you name it. With 3 dancers, you can definitely use her for most of those things, um, but sometimes, depending on the maps, you might have to alter some Sacred Seals or the Slot B skills. Like in some situations or some maps, Desperation might be a bit helpful, but most of the time, Far Trace is going to be the superior Slot B skill. Ninja Corrin is an extremely good unit in Aether Raid's offense. She could be used in different strategies, but most of the time, those strategies are going to be quite offensive in nature. So she could be used with her default build for hit and run, and you can see the gameplay on the side, and you can see exactly what I'm doing here. And she could also be used as a Wings of Mercy beacon by running Fury 4 and Fury 3 Sacred Seal. So this allows you to have 14 ship damage per combat, and within two combats, you can fall into the Wings of Mercy range of your dancers and your Gale Force allies. And you can just use a bunch of dancers and clean up your opponent's team. Pretty much a similar strategy that was seen last year with Ninja Lin. And Ninja Corrin can pretty much just do that same thing. But she hits on the resistance and can easily take care of units like Note and Saros, which are common mythics on the front line. She can also take care of many of the far safe tanks as you'll see in my gameplay here. I did beat, you know, the <laughs> Ascended Fiorms that I came across who didn't have Deflect Magic. So it could be useful. And Fury 4 is available in the Divine Code section. So it is actually not that hard build to make. Keep in mind that for this strategy, she needs to be at 56 or lower HP. Because only then you can fall into the Wings of Mercy range within two combats. She can also be used with Winter Bernadetta. And personally, I like this kind of playstyle a lot more because you don't really have to go in and try to get the chip damage done. You can just start off by having your unit be in the Wings of Mercy range because of the self-recall damage that Bernie does. So you can just use Ardent Sacrifice and have Corrin at half health so that you can just teleport with all of your Wings of Mercy allies uh, near her. And because we know that she's going to be at half health in most engagements, you can just run double, raise an attack and speed. And this is a lot more consistent than running any kind of other premium skill. Um, so I use this strategy a lot and this is pretty much what I would recommend. And in Aether Raid's offense, I would say that Joint Drive Attack doesn't really help you that much. So that's why you can just run Savage Blow as it will help you get the chip damage and eventually get the KOs. In Aether Raid's offense, the player phase strategies are the strongest they have ever been because we have access to safe defense, we have access to so many good dancers, good units that can support this kind of playstyle. And you can basically go and hit and run or set up a Gale Force team or have a Wings of Mercy beacon build. So having an offensive strategy in your arsenal is going to be helping you in many maps because not every team is going to be having insanely bulky units or high threat range. So against those kinds of teams, the player phase teams can really shine and make the match really easy for you because you don't really have to worry about your tank dying to something from the opponent's team. You're going to be in the control and most of the time you're going to be finishing this off in your own player phase. So I personally love the player phase strategies and I use them all the time. And having a bit of variety in your Aetherate's offense teams is never a bad thing and it's even better that we just get her for free. So there's no reason not to use her if you do love player phase strategies. And as you can see by my gameplay, she does a really fantastic job in Aetherate's offense. She can also be used in Aetherate's defense because she is a cavalier and she does have decent matchup against the far safe tanks, like I said. And many times if you're going to be facing some low merged far safe tanks, then she's going to be a threat to them. And in Aether Raid's defense, Kanto skills and Trey skills are not really all that good because you want the team to pressure the opponent instead of retreating and maybe eating up a dance. 
So that's why you want to run Lull Speed Resistance, and this is available in the Divine Code section as well. So this allows you to neutralize any kind of visible buffs. And in the light season, people are going to be using Peony, who comes with Fortify Resistance 4. So yeah, this definitely provides you with a lot of value. And Note can pretty much extend her range with the Pathfinder. So she can be a superb unit in Aether Raid's defense as well. And then finally, if you do plus and merge her, then she can be used in Arena. And she does score 195 BST at 760 score. So amazing arena investment overall. And if you want to spoil her with some premium skills, then attack speed catch 4 can be run. And this provides you with the maximum offensive throughput. And you can also run a menace skill. Um, it's not really needed, but a menace skill does have good synergy with the cat skill. So it could be run if you do have the fodder. And Ruptured Sky actually helps you a lot because you're going to be facing dragons like Ascended Udun. So at plus 10 merch, she's going to be making your life easier in arena. And she could also be used with Ruptured Sky and Summoner Duels. So in Summoner Duels, people are going to be using, again, Fallen Edelgard, Ascended Edun, and stuff like that. So if you do have Ruptured Sky and if you use her a lot, then it could be a worthwhile investment if you've already invested into her. Speaking of investing into her for Arena, if you do want to plus and merge her, then there's going to be a Hero Rises banner on 22nd March. And Ninja Corrin is going to be there, color sharing with three other green units. And because of that, it is pretty much the best chance you have to plus and merge her. It is going to be taking around 1500-ish orbs, depending on your luck. And you can also plus and merge the other green units present on the banner. So if you have saved up a lot of orbs, then you can certainly go ham on the Hero Rises banner and try to plus and merge her. And even if you do not plus and merge her, you can still spark her on the banner so that you can have an easier time on your journey to plus and merging her. Now let's talk about some of the best support units and teammates that you can run with Ninja Corrin. So for any kind of offensive unit, a dancer is going to be their best buddy. But for Ninja Corrin, a 3 movement dancer in particular is going to be amazing so that they can follow up with the movement of Ninja Corrin and still dance them up. And Desert Azura is a huge, huge mention here because she also has, because she has a harmonized skill that can refresh Ninja Corrin if she's within two spaces of her. And it does work on Fates and Path of Radiance units. And Desert Azura is going to be present on a Hero Rises banner. So <laughs> if you combine these two Green Mage Cavaliers, you can have an amazing and very deadly combo for pretty much any game mode. Not only Desert Azura is able to just match the movement of uh, Ninja Corrin, but also buff her up and also provide the support with the Harmonize skill. So you can pretty much just act three times if you combine the Harmonize and Duo skill of Ninja Corrin and Desert Azura. Duo Seeker does have that reposition in his Duo skill, but still he's a cavalry dancer. Raisin is pretty much the free to play option and him transforming is going to be hard at times, but still he can be used. And uh, as you saw in my gameplay video, I was using It's Curtains Eldigan for Gale Forcing. So if you're using Corrin as the Fury Wings of Mercy Beacon build or the Winter Bernadetta build, then having a dancer who can take two actions is amazing because you can Gale Force off of the enemy and then dance up Ninja Corrin. So that just helps you take out the enemy units as you have more actions. And it is amazing for any kind of player phase strategy. So Eldigan is not the most optimal one for its curtains. I just like him a lot. Um, but yeah, Resplendent Azura with Flashing Blade is a lot more optimal with its curtains. And Brave Marianne is amazing with these kinds of player phase strategies, but keep in mind that she will restrict the movement of Ninja Corrin, so that's why it's better in the light season where you're going to be using Peony. And then Duo Peony also has that duo skill that can refresh a unit. So like I was saying with Desert Azura, if you run these dancers, then you can have so many actions with Ninja Corrin. It's just ridiculous. You can also use her with some other supportive units in Aether Raid's offense. You already saw what I did with Winter Bernadetta. So you can just Ardent Sacrifice like three times and make Ninja Corrin enter the Wings of Mercy range. And this is pretty much the strategy I'm going to be using with her. And Double Life and Death on Bernie does allow her to soak any kind of Bright Shrine debuffs away from Corrin. And uh, Yuri is also pretty insane with his AoE build in Aether Raids where he can just attack the far safe tanks and chip them down with this kind of AoE special and make it easier for Ninja Corrin or just foul play her. And having another counter unit like Brave Erika, who can just destroy units at melee, is also going to be really helpful. I was also using her uh, when I was testing her out. And then finally, we move on to the more summoner duel side of things. So in summoner duels, having Node or Dagger, just providing that Pathfinder is going to be making your Ninja Corrin even more threatening. Um, because she's able to extend her range. And then Ash can also be helpful on the maps where you have a lot of trenches. Because it is going to be annoying for a Cavalier like her. Now keep in mind that if you teleport, 
then you're not going to be getting any kind of movement from your Fortre skill. So that's worth keeping in mind, but still Ash can be helpful depending on the map. You can also use some units who can smash the far safe tanks who are going to be running Deflect Magic and Summoner Duels, especially to deny any kind of kills to Ninja Corrin. Duochrome can bust through any kind of Deflect Magic Ascended Fear Arms through her Ice Mirror and just destroy her. And then Spring Sonia can nuke really hard with her AoE specials. And against the armors who run Hardy Fighter and Deflect Magic and stuff like that, they're still going to be eating so much damage from this kind of AoE special. And a lot of them are simply going to be dying because Sonia's damage output is just really high. And Carla is also similarly an AoE unit that you can use in Summoner Duels. And she can just do so much damage, just go in, kill a unit, and with her Growing Wind, just chip down the entire team of the opponents. And then Ninja Corrin can easily pick up, even if they have some kind of bulky far safe tank. Now everyone is going to be using Ninja Corrin for sure in Summoner Duels in either its offense, defense, and also in Arena. So your best free to play tool for dealing with Ninja Corrin is going to be Deflect Magic Sacred Seal. So this Sacred Seal does provide you with 80% damage reduction on consecutive hits and this is not only going to be helping you against Ninja Corrin but also going to be strengthening your matchup against Winter Lysithia and Reinhardt who are also similarly common brave units which you are going to be seeing in many of the game modes. I do think that Deflect Magic is going to be seeing a lot of usage because Ninja Corrin is going to be getting really popular and as it is people have a lot of Winter Lysithia because they sparked her and then Reinhardt is you know always a common unit. So that's why I think that this is going to be rising in popularity and this can seriously just swing the matchup in your favor because of its ridiculous damage reduction. There are definitely a lot of other tanks that can take care of Ninja Corrin but armor units are usually the preferred tanks right now in the meta because of the safe skills as they can also protect their teammates. So Ascended Fiorm is a pretty common unit that a lot of people have and uh, running Deflect Magic is going to be helping you surviving even a max investment Ninja Corrin. Here you have two calculations. The first one is against a lot more common plus one merge plus attack Ninja Corrin that's buffed up and then we have a max investment summoner supported Ninja Corrin that he might face in uh, you know something like summoner duels. So you can just see the difference in tanking and this is kind of a stress test I guess. If she can tank a plus 10 max invested Corrin then obviously are able to tank much lower invested uh, units. Brave Hector is also a pretty common save tank and even though he's not really seen that much at plus one merge, even a low invested plus one Hector with a hardy fighter build is able to survive this kind of plus 10 max invested Corrin. Uh, it is definitely recommended to have some merges on your Hector before you invest this much into him with hardy fighter and everything because he does like to have the merges to get the extra bulk. But yeah, he does the job. And then we have Ascended Idun, who's one of the more recent units. Unfortunately, she doesn't really kill a plus 10 max invested Ninja Corrin. And that's only because this Ninja Corrin is running the Summoner Support. If you take off the Summoner Support, then she also dies. So yeah, Hardy Fighter is really helpful with Aegis for taking the first hit for the damage reduction and then you get the damage reduction from Deflect Magic. So these are the three most commonly used far safe tanks and there are also some other tanks that can definitely take her on. Henriette is actually not the best far safe tank considering the fact that she doesn't have a preferred weapon. But still here she has insane matchup against Ninja Corrin, obviously because she is green. But because Henriette has really high resistance, she doesn't even need to run Deflect Magic to deal with this kind of plus 10 invested Ninja Corrin. You also have Flora. If you did pick up a form of Flora, then uh, yeah, that's not going to be much of a trouble for you. And you don't even need Deflect Magic Sacred Seal. And yeah, this is not a mistake. Ninja Corrin literally does no damage to Flora and she just does the true damage and that's pretty much it. Arden is actually a surprisingly good far safe tank even though you might think he has low resistance but keep in mind that his high HP does make up for that fact and he can like survive some really surprising amount of opponents and here he can just run a hardy fighter sacred cow build and big boy Arden is easily able to survive and kill this kind of ninja Corrin. And Winter Cecilia is also another free to play Grail unit that a lot of people have built up over the years. So she does not need any kind of deflect magic here. The Moonbow Retaliation is going to be pretty strong here with this kind of courtly mass build. And Winter Ignatz is one of the more recent units that people are going to be investing into for their safe tank or just for the arena usage. And in that case, he can definitely tank Ninja Corrin with a Spendthrift Bow build. Spendthrift Bow does make your matchup a bit better because of the attack debuff. 
and then Deflect Magic and Crafty Fighter with Distant Defense is gonna be doing the job. And finally, a lot of people have invested into Yenfei as their arena merch project. So this is gonna be a relevant calculation for you because a lot of people are gonna be plus in merging Ninja Corin because of her scoring. So you're gonna be running into her a lot. And Yenfei unfortunately doesn't do the best job. He like barely survives and that too with summoner support and fully buffed. And if Ninja Corin at plus and merge is speed ascended, then he just survives with literally 1 HP. Yes, 1 HP. And that's because she can close out the gap between the damage reduction speed based skill that he has got and his weapon. So speed ascended Ninja Corin is the most threatening one that Yenfei can face. Um, can obviously better this matchup by having some drive support on him or by putting him on a defensive tile. But yeah, this is definitely a relevant matchup if you are a plus 10 Yenfei user. So hope you all enjoyed this in-depth analysis. Make sure to share this video with your friends because everyone is going to be getting Ninja Corin, and some of these builds, counters, and the gameplay might interest people if they want to use Ninja Corin a lot. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave a like and a comment. Helps me tremendously, and if you really, really enjoyed, you could always support me directly by using Super Thanks or by becoming a YouTube member. And for more useful Fae videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as annoying as Deflect Magic is for Ninja Corin. So with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.